or go back to my study for this Wednesday morning as we look again at Isaiah chapter 2. And I want to just read you the end of verse 3 and into to verse 4, which are verses we're going to stick with uh, for the rest of this week as we think about uh, the end of this competition we thought about on Monday. Uh, verse 3, the law will go out from Zion the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And what effect will it have? He will judge between the nations, will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war any more. This is how God brings about global peace. How does he do it? His word goes out. From Zion. His law, his uh, scriptures, the Bible, the word of God uh, goes out, and, and, I, and I take it isn't just proclaimed, but is believed, is heard, because we, we saw yesterday the nations coming deliberately to the Mount of the Lord to learn God's ways, to be trained by God in how they should live. And so this is about how the world comes to live in a way that pleases God. We hear God's teaching. And what is the effect of, of that teaching? One thing is particularly picked up here. There are lots more to be seen in Isaiah, but one thing in particular is picked up here, isn't it? God will bring justice between many peoples. He'll settle disputes. Uh, one nation will have a complaint against another. Uh, one people group, one tribe, one clan, one family will have a dispute with another and God will settle those disputes with his perfect righteous word, his perfect perception of the situation, his understanding of the human heart involved and he will settle disputes. And, and so what does Isaiah see? This, remember, is spoken to a people who are going to come under a lot of military pressure from Assyria and Babylon over the coming years and are already coming under some pressure from Syria and Israel to the north. Um, nations will beat their swords into plowshares, their spears into pruning hooks. They'll turn their weapons of warfare uh, into what's most useful. Uh, warfare will no longer happen, so they'll turn their weapons into farming implements. They'll grow grain and grapes and figs and fruit. Uh, there'll be abundance of food. Uh, there won't be a season of people going out in the springtime for war and coming back in the autumn because there won't be warfare anymore. They won't train for war anymore. The competition is over, do you see? The world is, has limited resources and so in Isaiah's day, nations would rise up and cannibalise the nations around them for their resources, their, their slave labour, their land, their minerals. Uh, so has it ever been. And God says, my word will go out, people will hear my word, and it will bring an end to warfare. We see that sometimes, don't we? We, we, we glimpse it a, a little bit, for example, with the great William Wilberforce and that savage uh, transatlantic slave trade. It is the word of God working in the people of God that actually brought that to an end. Uh, and you can you can see a lot of that in, in uh, Tom Holland's book, uh, Dominion, if you want to read that. A fantastic resource for us to see how Christian thought has, has spread into non-Christian society. An end of warfare. An end to competition. And why? Because everybody wins. We come to the temple of the Lord, the mountain of the Lord's temple. We learn his way. And he gives justice. Everybody wins. It's not a competition anymore. We don't have to fight each other for enough food to eat and a place to lay our heads because nobody will take more than they need. Everyone will have enough. End of famine. End of warfare. Everybody wins. That's great news, isn't it? Shall I pray for us? Heavenly Father, would you... Uh, help us to be a people who are changed by your word. Help us to look forward to the day when your word has conquered nations, brought an end to warfare, 
an end to selfishness, an end to overconsumption, an end to competition. And would you bring us that peace and that bounty that you have promised? For Jesus' sake. Amen. I'll see you again tomorrow.